Hey, my name is Casey. Today we are going to be talking about a timeline of events. So I made this timeline. Um, it is going to be um, depicting the life of events of a man named Chief William McIntosh Jr. We're going to go through this timeline together and as I tell you about this timeline and things that happen in this man's life, you're going to understand why this is important to American history. So as we go through this timeline, I have put some um, images in this movie um, and these images were actually taken at the Historical Museum slash Hotel in Indian Springs or at Indian Springs in Flowville, Georgia. So if you've never been there before, um, they have all kinds of neat history, um, super cool artifacts that you can look at. Um, a big part of this hotel museum is about Chief William McIntosh. Um, if you ever have the chance to go to go there, it's super neat. So the pictures you're going to see is those pictures that I took. Um, they depict, you know, things about his life, um, etc. So the first thing we're going to talk about with Chief Wild Mac William McIntosh is just a little background history. So he was born around the year of 1778. Um, he was born in Coweta County, Georgia, um, and he has an interesting background. So his mother um, was a Scottish white woman, and his father was a full-blooded Creek Indian. So um, he has a very, you know, different background of two different cultures. Um, so he learned English at a young age, and he also was very involved in the Creek Indian culture. Um, so he, at a young age, he um, fought he joined the war and he fought in the war of 1812 um and another war as well so he was very involved in that um he actually became general of a general of the army um but he also was very involved in the um creek indian tribe um so there's lower creek Indians and there's higher creek indians so he was a part of the low creek indian tribe which basically means that like a um mixed breed basically of people that were in the tribe so he fought in the wars he became a general of the army um but he also became a um chief in the creek indian tribe so he became pretty well known around town um, he started making money, um, meeting new people, that type of thing. So, he also, he married three different women at the same time, which was common back then. Um, he had three wives. They were all from different backgrounds. Um, he was a family man. He had multiple children. Well, he had a cousin who was a governor. Um, one of his daughters husbands was a governor. I mean, he had people in his family who were pretty high up in Georgia. So he became well known. Um, he had a lot of friends, but he just seemed to struggle between, you know, his dad's side and his mom's side as far as his race. Um, so that was a big struggle for him. So, after he, um, you know, became grown and all that kind of stuff, um, there, it is well known that the government wanted to take Native American land. Um, at this time in his life, um, he knew that the government wanted to take all the land of the Native Americans in Georgia, and he didn't like that. So... He decided to do something about it. Um, and as far as my research goes, I learned that um, when you are a chief of a Indian tribe, you are, it is against the rules to um, sell Native American land and make sense. Um, but he did anyways. Um, well, 
technically. So what he did was, it is called the Treaty of 1825. So the Treaty of 1825 um, was a treaty that, along with Chief William McIntosh, um, there were several other men involved, um, but he was one of the main ones. He, um, they got together, and at the hotel that this museum, it, it's the Museum of Indian Springs now, um, they got together at this hotel, which is a hotel at Indian Springs that um, Chief William McIntosh and his cousin actually built. Um, really interesting, one of the biggest hotels that there was in Indian Springs, but anyways... They joined at the hotel and they signed this treaty. So the Treaty of 1825 says that um, there was tons and tons of acres of land of Native American land and they sold it to the government for $200,000, all of the land. Um, and a lot of people were very upset about it. Um, so couple years later, or no, not a couple years, um, a couple months later in between, Chief William McIntosh was murdered. Um, he was murdered by a group of Creek Indians, um, for signing that treaty. Um, it is said that they warned him not to sign the treaty and to sell the Native American land, but he did. Um, his, what happened was the Creek Indians that murdered him, they set his house on fire and, um, they, they murdered him in front of his wives. Um, and it was a very, um, terrible killing. Um, but after his death, a lot of people argued his motives behind it. Um, some people argue that he did it for the Native Americans um, because they he knew that the government was going to take the land at some point anyways, regardless. So some people argue that he did it because um, he knew they were going to take it regardless and he wanted to get that money for the Native Americans. Um, other people argue that he wanted the money for himself and he was being greedy and selfish and, um, you know, not for good reasoning. But either way, um, he signed the treaty. He was murdered for it. It was an awful, awful thing. So this picture here, you can see this is the monument right outside of the hotel museum at Indian Springs. This rock is this, it's ginormous, but, um, it is said that they would stand on this rock and, you know, have little meetings or whatever. Um, so this monument represents him, um, you know, what his background story was. Um, what's really interesting about this, and it kind of, you'll understand why it's so important, is that, and why it affects us today, um, which we know that Native Americans are still in a state of oppression, and they always have been. It's not very talked about, but um, they are. And um, what's really interesting is it said that this kind of started getting the ball rolling for the Trail of Tears, which we know that story. It was taught in school. Um, the Trail of Tears, the Native Americans had to go, I believe it was through nine different states. Um, a lot of them were, you know, they starved to death and things like that. And, um, a lot of them lost their lives, but it, it is said that this is one of the main things that started the Trail of Tears from Georgia. Um, because the Native Americans, the government had their land because of this treaty of 1825 um, that William McIntosh signed. Um, and they had to go. They, they couldn't stay in Georgia anymore. Um, and so it's super interesting. You know, we hear about the Trail of Tears. We've heard about, you know, Native Americans a little bit in school. But I've never heard this story. 
And I thought it would be interesting that I did, um, you know, something to do with a, something local that we could all resonate with. Um, so that is my artifact. That is the story that I chose to do. Um, it's really interesting if you ever get to go to the hotel uh, museum at Indian Springs that they will tell you all about it. Super interesting. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned something and enjoyed the pictures as well.